Pro Wrestling Bits. Subscribe now. Thank you. Uh, like I say always, anytime I do an interview, don't die with a story and you tell it. So right, man. to uh, uh, share great news. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, we can get into that. And I'm actually, I'm really excited to go see you out live because I'm right here in Los Angeles. Uh, New Japan okay. Resurgence going to be in LA. And so that's going to be really incredible. You're working with Ren Narita right now and you're going to be on the opposite end of a six-man tag match. You, Rocky Romero, Wheeler Yuta versus TJP, Clark Connors, and Ren Narita. That sounds like an incredible match. Tell me about your excitement level for that and any news you want to get into. You know, when they first made the announcement about resurgence, I haven't been able to sleep. You know what I mean? Like, for me, I don't need an alarm clock to wake me up. My grind, my passion, my drive to want to wow the crowd wakes me up. And um, resurgence is a true test. You know what I mean? Resurgence is really a true test for me. It's my first live crowd uh, for New Japan. So if I just... If I succeed there, then uh, then I'm okay. I'm okay. But yeah, you know, the one thing about Ren Narita, who's going to be involved in the six man tag, is uh, he's 22, 23. I'm 37, going to be 38 November 2nd. Uh, he's young. He's young and he's young and he's dumb. And he's got a lot to learn. And he's going to find out at Resurgence and beyond that. Missing no days off isn't a gimmick. It's a lifestyle, constant grind and struggle. And it's going to be a dogfight. It's going to be a dogfight because New Japan recently did an article on me about what I thought of resurgence. And they said that I've been the driving force behind New Japan, New Japan Strong. And that's like one of my biggest honors ever. So I need to deliver. It's going to be a dogfight at resurgence and Fighting Spirit Unleashed. It's gonna be a dog fight. Absolutely, and you touched on something that I just wanna get more information from you as a wrestler and that this is gonna be your first live crowd since the pandemic. You have been accustomed to wrestling in silence and in front of empty arenas for a while now, but now here you are in front of a crowd wrestling the way wrestling was supposed to be set. So what is your mindset? How is that going to change the way you approach a match knowing there are gonna be fans in the building? Well, it's a big test for me. Like I said, with no crowd uh, for over a year now, I got match of the year with Filthy Tom Lawler uh, and 13, 15,000 fans, however many fans voted on us, uh, meant the world to me. And it means something that I, I add value that New Japan Strong lock, Locker Room is one of the hardest working locker rooms on the planet, hands down. You know, for me, 19 years, September 11th, I've been rocking and rolling. I've got to prove myself every day. You know, Ren Narita, he's young. I've got to work extra hard. You know, I got to be up at 5 a.m. I got to be at the gym. I've got to be doing my yoga. I've got to just make sure that I'm ready. You got to stay ready so I ain't got to get ready. And resurgence, uh, it's going to be off the hook. You know, it's almost sold out, over 2,000 plus uh, fans in attendance. Uh, again, I can't sleep, you know what I mean? Uh, as long as I've been doing this, uh, I'm nervous, but uh, I'm going to deliver. You mentioned the locker room and your peers, and last time we spoke, you had a great quote where you were talking about how much it means to get that respect from your peers and that you went backstage and the great Sean Spears said to you, whoo, I needed that, almost as if yeah, saying that yeah. you brought out the best in him. I really love that. So now that you're back in the full swing of things, you're wrestling for multiple promotions, you're back with New Japan Strong, around some of the best talent in the year, uh, and you know, in wrestling, how has that happened to you in terms of that respect from your peers? Do you find that you're getting more of that working with more different people? Uh, I've got to deliver every time. You're only as good as your last match. And uh, top to bottom, the roster uh, puts their heart and soul into New Japan, New Japan Strong. There isn't an uh, ego in the locker room. Everyone delivers. Uh, resurgence is a big night for all of us. It's a big night for me. It's a big night for you who's going to be in attendance. Uh, and we're taking New Japan Strong on the road on top of that. There's so much going on. Uh, I don't want to cram 10 pounds of crap into a five-pound bag with this interview, but there's just so much going on wrestling-wise in general, not just New Japan, New Japan Strong, just every everything, uh, AEW, WWE, NWA. There's so much impact. There's so much going on, so... As a fan of wrestling, I want everyone and I want to encourage everyone to enjoy it all, not just pick one brand. Uh, 
love it all and I'm loving it all. And it's important for me personally to stay in my lane. You know what I mean? I, I see what other people are doing, but I've got to focus on me. Any, Alfred, have you been flying before? Yes, for sure. The next time you fly, listen to the flight attendant when she's going over her safety protocol. She always says, or he always says, put the oxygen mask on yourself first before assisting others. And that's what I've got to do in my daily life. You know what I mean? I've got to do me first. So with WWE, I did my thing as a Nexus, prime time player, make Darren Young great again. Now, finally, I'm getting the recognition with New Japan Strong. And it's funny, I was... Uh, watching the Olympics with my family, we, uh, they were always rooting for the U S I was always rooting for Japan and my family would always, why are you rooting for Japan? I said, because Japan was the first to put me on the marquee wow. before WWE did, you know what I mean? So like, it's me, myself and I, at this point in my career, you know, uh, new Japan brought me in. So I must deliver. I'm going to deliver. And the best is yet to come for me. Wow, that's incredible, Fred. I, I'd love to hear that. And the fact that you have delivered, and you know, that resurgence term, I think you embody that more than anybody on this card in terms of where you were in WWE once upon a time, where you are now. And I think you'd be a perfect person to ask this. You know, there was a wave of NXT releases, WWE releases. A lot of talented people are now having an uncertain future in wrestling. What advice would you give to these individuals in terms of life after WWE and how they can have their own resurgence? You know... There's so much that I've done after WWE. You know, it's not fun when you get that call. It's just the nature of the business. Uh, I always say Michael Jordan can't play basketball forever. And I'm never comparing myself to Michael Jordan. Maybe his work ethic, but, you know, Michael Jordan can't play basketball forever. So things come to an end with WWE, but you have to understand that you beat your body up with WWE. So you have to utilize what you've made of yourself with WWE and use that on a resume. You know, I've been lucky enough to have many great sponsorships. I've been lucky enough to still continue to do what I love. You know, I was denied by AEW, not once, but twice, but AEW wasn't my all in goal. It was new Japan and I pursued it with laser like focus. Um, and <laughs> all the releases that happen, you guys got to just keep your head up. Guys and girls, keep your head up, move forward. And the only time you should look back is to kind of see how far you've come. You know what I mean? And it's funny, um, a couple months ago, back in May, I did something with WWE. I did a Nexus documentary, Untold mm -hmm. Nexus. And um, as soon as I got there, I had my uh, Varsity New Japan jacket on. And before we started doing the interview, uh, before we started doing the interview, the producer said, oh, do you mind if you take off the New Japan jacket? I said, you know, honestly, I've worked very hard for this. And, you know, WWE just recently inducted Jushin Liger into the Hall of Fame. So let me just be me, you know what I mean? You know, to have the honor to be on the billboard with New Japan Strong, that's my biggest honor. So, you know, WWE, give a dog a bone when it comes to an interview type Nexus documentary. Uh, and then the producer said, no problem, you sold me on it. So I kept my New Japan jacket on because I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the brand New Japan Strong. You've got TJP, you've got Clark Connors, you've got Carl Fredericks, so many. I'm missing so many guys. You know, Tanahashi is going to be at Resurgence, who as much as I fanboy over him, he fanboys over me, and it's just uh, such a really – it, you know, that whole saying, it all goes down in the DM. It goes down in the DM <laughs> with me, uh, just fanboying over uh, Tanahashi and him doing the same. So I can't wait to meet him. It'll be a first. Um, filthy Tom Lawler of being the house at Resurgence. It's just a hardworking locker room that I'm the type of person, I'm not trying to hammer anyone down. I'm trying to pull people up with me. You know what I mean? I want to pull New Japan Strong up with me and uh represent like no other you know and uh the, the the best is yet to come for new japan strong we're gonna be in philly we're gonna be in dallas who knows where else um but when the pandemic hit you know i didn't stop i didn't stop grinding away i didn't stop working out i didn't stop chasing my dreams and now 
it's all happening. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned this with you, but this this was this was this was the show that I went to. I don't know if you were there at the Globe Theater. Yes. Um, November of 2019, but. September of 2019, when I ran into Lance Hoyt, uh, he told me about the show. And this was the show that I went to, that I met with all of the New Japan wrestlers. And this was the show that I said to myself, I'm here to see if I can fit in with these guys. If I fit in, if I fit in, if I fit in. November 2019, I went to the show. And after it was all said and done, I said to myself, man, I can hang with these guys. I can elevate these guys. And look, you know, uh, August 2021, we're doing it, you know what I mean? So it's all about speaking it into existence. You know, I'm a big fan. I don't know if you know, uh, he doesn't like to be called a motivational speaker, but Gary V. Yes. Uh, he's a big inspiration of mine. And I actually did his interview uh, about a week ago. I posted it on my social media and I wore this, you know. Uh, I could have worn my New Japan stuff, but I've got this. I've got my, I'm representing New Japan here. Uh, but patience is truly a talent, you know what I mean? I've got to practice what I preach, and I wear this a lot because patience is truly a talent. This this wasn't overnight for me doing stuff with New Japan. You know, this was a process, and you know, you got to stick with it. You know what I mean? It's not easy. It can be mentally draining, but I'm doing it. New Japan Strong is doing it, so I'm just I'm just grateful and I'm happy. I'm happy for you, Fred, because I mean, I was right there with you at the beginning of the pandemic where you kind of started this journey and then now to see where it is now, you have come a long way. Your no days off mantra is really starting to pay off. And you did mention something that I loved saying just how much you fit in with New Japan because you do. And what I love about you and your story is that you've got a great story. You've got great representation in terms of a black man, LGBT, but that I think comes secondary to how talented of a wrestler you are in terms of your presentation. You fit right in uh, to New Japan Pro Wrestling and you're able to tell your story through your talents. Uh, now, you mentioned uh, about AEW kind of turning you down a couple of times, and I wanted to get your thoughts on, in fact, it, I love that wrestling has all this diversity of as of late and, you know, all this inclusion, but I do uh, notice that AEW at the top of their promotion tends uh, to not have as much diversity inclusion. So what advice would you give as somebody who's able to fit into a promotion like New Japan just right away, what advice would you give to any promotion, AEW or any promotion, in including more people um, from different orientations, from different races, into the top of their plans? We have to keep going. There's a lot of work to do. Keep going. We need more reps. We need more reps at representation. We need more out athletes coming out, speaking out. And I always say, you know, being the first openly gay WWE superstar, I have a duty to instill confidence in our youth and to lead by example. And I, I don't just, I'm not a social media type of person where I just talk about it. I go to the schools before the pandemic. I speak to fifth graders. I speak to organizations like Viacom. I, I work with organizations like the Covenant House in LA, of course, that deals with LGBTQ homeless youth, 42% of it, uh, being LGBTQ, so I'm always grinding away, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not a psychiatrist, but I am a friend, uh, and I always tell my social media, uh, my social media is an open diary to the world, so anything I post is going to come from the heart, so if anyone doesn't have their uh, support from the family, be a part of my family on social media, so uh, that's why I call myself a suntan superman. I've got to be a support system, a beacon of hope for not only the LGBTQ, not only the African American, not only the Asian community, all communities. You know, I said to a friend, I said, we need like a racial harmony year, you know what I mean? Racial harmony day, where all ethnicities come together and embrace our differences and stuff like that. That's the one thing that I tell kids when I speak to them. Um, when you go home to mommy and daddy, uh, word of the day is empathy, you know, have an understanding for one another. And go home to mommy and daddy and say, I learned a really cool word, empathy, you know, and that's what it's all about. It's about not only being representation in the ring, but going to the schools, doing Zooms like this to share your story. You know, that's why I miss no days off, also known as a, as, as a suntan Superman, you know. <laughs> No, I absolutely love that. And, and you've gotten so much more exposure. And I was very glad to see you uh, also with NWA, which I uh, love NWA and their presentation, kind of like an old school studio show with still wrestling involved. I want 
to get your opinion in terms of the differences. What are the major differences between working with a company like New Japan Strong and then versus a company like NWA uh, that you've noticed as a wrestler? Um, you know, it's about delivering for me. You know what I mean? And, and it's about keeping that energy up with me at all times. I'm aggressive. I'm rugged. I bring it with NWA, but most importantly, I bring it with New Japan Strong. So I, at this point in my career, I want to focus on quality over quantity. I don't need to do a lot of wrestling anymore. I don't need to honestly do JCW or, I mean, everything's great, but I think it's important for me to focus on one or two promotions, New Japan, New Japan Strong being one of them. You know, my ultimate goal is to uh, travel to Japan. And uh, again, patience is a talent. I've got to, I've got to do it, baby, and I'm going to do it. But the NWA is 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 an organization that has so much rich history that I'm very happy to have done some work with them. I'm glad because this is going to be my final question is your ultimate goal. And you did say it was to travel to Japan, but I'm going to follow up on that. Once you're in Japan and you've reached that goal, uh, what's the end game? Will wrestling a match in Japan suffice to you to say that you've done it? Or do you want bigger things? Is there a certain championship you'd want to win in Japan uh, once you're there? Uh, I've got to take it. I've got to take it step by step. You know what I mean? I, I'm 37 at, 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 at 27, 17 years old. In early 20s, I'd probably be in a rush. You know, in 20s, we're in our 20s. We're trying to figure it out. At 37 years old, I'm very happy and content. Uh, my own happiness is more important than anything. And I think the reason why people are kind of so down and depressed in this world is because, you know, they're not doing what they love. They're doing what they have to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what the work world and the workforce do. It steals dreams. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People will compromise their dreams just to survive. That's why when people are out here making moves and conquering their dreams, they are extraordinary, my man, because they I have decided, they have decided that I'm not doing nothing else but this, even if I don't get paid for it. And I get paid with New Japan, but you know what? It's not, it's not about the money for me, you know? Uh, I rather, and this is just an example, okay? I rather make $97,000 and be happy than make $297,000 and be unhappy and underutilized, you know? That's a conversation that needs to be talked about. At $97,000, you just need to live a little bit more com comfortably, you know, com comfortably, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, I get tongue-tied and stuff like that. But, yeah, that's the conversation that needs to be talked about. My own happiness is more important. I'm not a money guy. I'm not into materialistic things. Uh, I just want to be happy, and I am with New Japan. Excellent, uh, Fred, and it's great to see you happy. Now, I know you've kind of alluded to 10 pounds of announcements, and, you know, maybe we don't have time to get to all the announcements. Is there anything at the top of your list that you'd like to announce and share with anybody in terms of what's next for Fred Roster or New Japan Strong? Well, I mean, of course, I'm a wrestler and an advocate, but I was a little bummed out. I was going to be doing Megacon in Orlando, but with, you know, the variant and uh, COVID and all this stuff going on, I had to cancel. Uh, my appearance uh, right before resurgence. I was going to be flying out Wednesday to Orlando and be there Thursday and Friday and come back Friday for resurgence this coming Saturday. So, yeah, you know, I'm always grinding away, not only with uh, Strong, but with my social media uh, sponsorships. Uh, I'm with Glitch Energy. Like I said, social media is a second job, so um, I've got to represent the best way possible. So, Glitch Energy I'm working with, New Japan I'm working with, uh, other projects are kind of, I always say, I always say, I don't want to, you know, uh, say anything and nothing ever happens when it comes to new projects. Uh, so I always say just because moves aren't being announced doesn't mean moves aren't being made. So constantly, constantly grinding away. But my main focus right now, 24-7, uh, 365 is resurgence and fighting spirit unleashed and beyond. Absolutely, Fred. Thank you so much for the time. I always get so inspired talking to you. You've got the greatest <laughs> attitude, and it's good to see that pay off in real time. So keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you. And like <clears throat> again with uh, the New Japan Strong at uh, the LA Coliseum, I don't know how the American crowd. I've never watched 
Well, actually, I did watch at uh, the Globe Theater, right. but I can't. But but I don't remember how the crowd is going to be. Uh, you know, different crowd, I'm sure, when it comes to being vocal. But uh, if if I spot you or you spot me, make some noise for me. Block for the sure. hey, do do something. I I I need that energy. I need to see it. You know what I mean? And definitely definitely pimp out the new theme song, No Days Off, that was uh, helped produced by. Next is member Iron Mike Tarver. So awesome. uh, no days off. It's uh, streaming on all all live streaming music. No days off. So I can't wait to uh, hear that live in front of the crowd. So yeah, it's gonna be off the hook. Yeah, I, I will make sure you hear me, friend. I don't care if they put me in the media section. I'm supposed to be professional. I'll make sure you hear me for sure. Ah, <laughs> uh, awesome, awesome, Alfred. That's excellent, man. Thank you so much for the time. No, thank you, thank you, bro.